Hello, this is Alex Marquis, formerly known as Elder Marquis. If you don't believe me, here's my tag. Um, I served in the Colorado Fort Collins mission. I was sent home six months early because of the coronavirus. Um, I have asthma, so it was a bummer, but I've learned a lot from this experience and I'm excited to talk to you all today. Um, I'm just going to kind of open my talk with a little bit about me, and then I'm going to share a quick spiritual thought, something that I learned from my mission, and then I'm going to close with my testimony. It's going to probably be short, but hey, short is good sometimes, you know, spiritually power packed, direct, all that good stuff. So, um, I grew up in Santa Barbara, California, um, lived there my whole life, graduated from there um, in high school. And then three days after we moved down to Laguna Niguel, where we're all at in the Dana Hills ward. Um, and then I went to a year at BYU in Provo, came home, and then I went out on my mission. Um, and I had an amazing experience. Um, before I get into that, a little bit about me. Um, I love to sing. Singing is kind of like my big thing that I love to do. I love to perform in general, like dancing, acting. It was a big thing in high school for me. Um, I love to play computer games. I love to play volleyball and basketball. I love to surf. Um, recently, I've been getting into slacklining because of quarantine. You know, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, love gardening, roller skating. Kind of a mixed bag, but... Um, so yes, Colorado Fort Collins mission that covers n parts of Northern Colorado, a lot of Wyoming up in like Casper, Cheyenne, Laramie, and then this little chunk of Nebraska, Scotts Bluff, Chimney Rock, um, Gearing. Um, and I had an amazing experience, uh, definitely a ton of life changing experiences that the Lord specifically tailored to my needs and to my personality and to who I was and who I was becoming. Um, I started in an area, um, the area that was like surrounding the Colorado Fort Collins Temple. Um, and that was really a unique experience. Got to meet some of my best friends along the way, um, missionaries and members of the church and people that we were able to teach. Um, it's been incredible. Um, so yeah, uh, so I wanted to share a brief message, um, that comes from an experience that I had in the Fort Collins YSA, um, which is the YSA that kind of covers the, the CSU or Colorado State University campus. So we met this girl at the Faith and Beliefs Fair, which is kind of just every, it felt like Joseph Smith's day where there were just a ton of different, um, sects of the church. Kind of saying, hey, come over here. Hey, we're going to go hiking. Yo, dudes, let's go. Let's go hike a 14er and have a jolly old time. And then there was me and my companion and the institute director with our lowly little stand. Where that was like, they had like signs that were made 10 years ago that they just keep reusing every year. It was kind of hilarious. We had fruit snacks. We passed them out. We could say, hey, do you want a truth snack? Do you want a truth snack? It was pretty fun. Um, but towards the end of it, a uh, little girl, kind of like four, nine, four, ten, really short, walked up to us and um, just said, hey, my boyfriend is um, planning on going on a mission. And I actually really was curious about what he believes in. Um, it comes up in conversation every once in a while. But all he says is talk to the missionaries if you really want to talk. Um, and I was like, well, that's perfect. All right, let's get a let's 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 meet sometime we'd love to share a message we'd love to answer your questions and she said okay let's go for it and um a few days later we met with her um and it was going really great we shared the restoration with her she was like wow that's amazing it totally makes sense too but down the road one of her i think roommates or the people that she interacted with at, at school um approached her and kind of shared with her a lot of bible scriptures that apparently like claimed that we were the the worst church out there that you should never talk to missionaries or you know our gospel is not the true gospel and 
it kind of baffled me that someone would do that. And I was like, wow, what, what could she have shared? And she said, well, she shared these scriptures. She sent, he's, um, she sent us all the scriptures that was shared with her. And we were like, okay, well me and my companion, obviously just, uh, deep dived into each one of these scriptures. And we're like, Hmm, that's okay. All right, cool. Random, random point here, random point there. These don't really connect, but, um, we were going to like, nitpick like the context of each one of these bible scriptures that was like our first idea kind of like the idea without the spirit we were like <laughs> yeah we're gonna slam her and we're gonna just react like just just come back with this sweet rebuttal but then after a lot of praying and like deep thought and conversation with with god we felt um inspired to do it a little differently um instead we just wanted to read the book of mormon with her really and we we started in Moroni 7, so I'm going to turn to that in my sister's scriptures, because mine are at another place right now. Whoa. Oh, no. I can't really find Book of Mormon scriptures if there's only a Bible here. Well, Jane. <laughs> oh, man. This is the worst. The whole stick is going to see this. Well, I, I kind of know where the scripture is. It's Moroni 7, 11. talks about a bitter fountain can't bring forth good water, and a good fountain can't bring forth bitter water. And essentially, right after that, um, Moroni expounds, and he's like, um, like good things um, all come from God, things that entice and invite to to serve God and to love God are inspired of God. And then everything that invites and entices to do evil is of the devil. And that's obvious. Boom, 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 black, white. Um, and so we read that with this girl and we were like, see, okay, do you get that? Like, that's a pretty basic principle of good and evil, you know, Satan and God, all of that stuff. She's like, I get that. Yeah, that makes sense. And we are like, okay, cool. We love that. We wanted to share with you a scripture. Um, that, that kind of just, that really, really speaks lengths to us personally. And the spirit speaks lengths to us personally and testifies that this book, the book of Mormon that has been highly criticized and, and, you know, rejected by a lot of people, you know, it really just testifies that this is true and that it actually claims what it is. Um, and so we read Helaman five twelve with her. Um, it talks obviously about, um, we should build our rock on the son of God, you know, who is our redeemer. And when the devil shall, shall send forth his, uh, mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, they shall not beat upon us if we have our rock, you know, if we have our solid foundation in Jesus Christ. And so then we just, we just opened it to her. We asked her, so what are your thoughts from this scripture? What does this teach you? What does this help you learn? She said, well, it truly helps me turn to the right source. And we're like, well, that's, that's great. Yeah, we, we agree. It definitely has for us as well. Um, we turn to Mark. I think it was in Mark 3 where Jesus Christ says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Now, this is where the Pharisees were claiming, you know, Jesus was casting out devils because he was the devil himself or that he had a devil. And Jesus was like, well, no, like if I was the devil, why would I be doing the work of, of good casting out devils? You know, I would want to bring more devils or something, you know, just cause more mayhem. He says a house divided against itself cannot stand. And so that means Satan will not cast out Satan. You know, that, that is just not something that is in his character. Therefore, if we take that principle and we bring it to the book of Mormon, we can see that the things that the Book of Mormon invites us to do, to love God, to serve your neighbor. When you're in the service of your fellow being, you're only in the service of your God. These are all great things. Repent every day, pray often, you know, turn to the right source, just like Lacey said. And so we shared with her, look, there are a lot of claims. There are a lot of things that, that you could get into a lot of nitpicking that can happen. And there's a lot of things that we could respond with. That's like, well, if the comma was here, it would mean something different. We could just get 
we could dive deep into that. But what's important is that we know that the Spirit of the Lord testifies of the Book of Mormon. Plain and simple. It teaches us correct principles. It teaches us the gospel of Jesus Christ, the things that we're supposed to do to go back home to our Heavenly Father. I've learned that personally in my life, and I know that it is true. Um, I loved my mission because it allowed me to be in a circumstance where I loved reading the scriptures. Like it was, it was the, my favorite part of the day. Um, and through my studies, I, I've come to know that, that Jesus Christ is my redeemer. He is our redeemer. He is my friend. He's my older brother and, and he's real. I know that my heavenly father, through the help of Jesus Christ, created this world and he created all of us, and he has a plan for us. I know that the Spirit of the Lord, it's, he is real. He is a personage of spirit. He helps us every day, and he can dwell within us as long as we're worthy. I know that the priesthood was restored to the earth. I know that it was necessary in Christ's time. I know it was necessary with every dispensation. And I'm so happy and grateful that, that we have it today where men and women could work under the priesthood, work through the priesthood, and and help others come unto Christ. I know that Joseph Smith was a prophet, and I know that because of the Book of Mormon. A prophet, the, a prophet has clear access to God. You know, a prophet receives revelation from God for us. And Joseph Smith certain, certainly did that. And the doctrines that were restored are comforting, they're perfect, and they're wonderful. I'm grateful for my mission. I'm grateful for my family for supporting me. And I'm thankful for the wonderful ward that I've, I kind of just like randomly was placed into not knowing you as, as well as I, you know, I probably would have if I lived there for longer, but I still receive support from, you know, the, the young women, they'd send me letters and the, the primary kids would send me letters of thanking me. And I, that meant a lot to me. It really did. Um, I remember re reading like, wonderful mission from from a little boy um on, on like a little note card in it, it i remember it making me kind of like choked up because i was like wow there's people that don't even know me that i'm i'm affecting and it was it was a good feeling um i'm happy that my services has helped others and and i'm grateful that that it's i mean helped me just as much you know a lot more actually but um I wanted to share my testimony and that spiritual thought in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace.